Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper from Princeton Spine and Joint Center. I wanted to respond to a question that I received the other day. The question came uh, in response to a podcast that I had done with Dr. Mailer a, a while ago. Uh, the podcast was on cervical radiculopathies, basically pinched nerves in the neck. And the, the podcast went on for, uh, ooh, I think it's about an hour and a half, and we really got into the weeds on things. And the, the person that wrote in asked, you know, they said that they really enjoyed the podcast. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. But why hadn't we talked about gabapentin? Why hadn't we, gabapentin or Neurontin? Gabapentin being the generic of Neurontin. Uh, gabapentin is a medication that's often used to treat nerve pain. And, you know, honestly, I hadn't even thought about the fact that we hadn't talked about that in the, in the podcast. And it's a really good question. Um, first, what is gabapentin? It's a nerve membrane stabilizing uh, drug. Uh, originally, it's been used as an anti-epileptic. Uh, some people use it, it, it's no longer used as a first-line anti-epileptic, um, but sometimes it is used to treat, to treat seizures, seizure disorders, uh, in conjunction with other medications. It's also used sometimes to uh, help treat depression, and it's used in, in our space more uh, for pain, and specifically for, for nerve pain. It's really a, a pain medication for nerves is the way that, that it gets used in the orthopedic and musculoskeletal spaces. Um, now, the reason, you know, that, that we didn't touch on that, and, and when I thought about the question about gabapentin, I realized we hadn't talked about a lot of pain medications. Um, the reason being is that the way that our, our practice is, is really uh, structured, the way that I tend to think about these things, even when, when I write books or, or, or articles, is about fixing the underlying problem, right? And I'm, I'm sure that's how, how people like to think of it as well, which is, you know, someone comes in and they, they have a pinched nerve in their neck or a pinched nerve in their lower back, and... Uh, the way we like to go about it is to find out, you know, where is the the inflammation, where's the pain coming from, which, you know, usually means finding where the inflammation is coming from, and then talking about how can we make the inflammation go away, um, and then talking about once the inflammation is is away, how do we use exercises and ergonomics and biomechanics to make sure that the inflammation doesn't return, and that's the way that we we really uh, effectively treat. Um, and you know, cure these kinds of these kinds of issues. So, where is the role for something like gabapentin? Well, gabapentin um, and other pain medications aren't going to cure a problem, right? The gabapentin, if you take it for nerve pain, might help the nerve pain. Uh, but when you stop taking the gabapentin, you haven't changed any underlying issue, right? The, the pain is going to come back. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there's no role for gabapentin. Actually, I, I do prescribe gabapentin in, in my practice sometimes, and I have colleagues that prescribe it a lot more and, and, and some less. Um, but ba basically, I, I think that, uh, well, a couple of things. Sometimes life just isn't as easy as we would like to, to think it is, and, and sometimes pain is harder to get, to get better, and the treatment course ha it becomes more protracted, right? The exercises take longer. Uh, we try injections, maybe they, they don't work. The person's not a surgical candidate or doesn't want surgery. Um, and, and, and then what do you do? And I think there certainly the, the idea of using gabapentin uh, becomes much more attractive. Basically, gabapentin goes, people take it from anywhere from 100 milligrams all the way up to 3,200 and more milligrams sometimes. Um, in, in my practice and my colleagues that I talk to about this, we, we tend to use anywhere from three to 600 milligrams or, or, or less. A good rule of thumb with gabapentin is that you don't want to go up or down any, on any given day by, by more than 300 milligrams. Because you have to remember, you can use gabapentin to treat epilepsy, to treat seizures. Um, and so it makes me uncomfortable to have someone on a high dosage and then stop it like that. You, you worry about withdrawals. You, you worry about seizures. Um, so you want to always taper if you're on a, a high dose or if you're on even a medium dose, you want to taper and certainly not go down by more than 300 milligrams in any given day. Um, and you want to talk to your doctor about the best way to come off of it. Uh, but it also underscores that this is a, you know, it's a serious medication. Um, and, uh, and, and so you, you, want to, you, you want to realize that if you're going to use it, usually you're, you're going to stay on it for a little while. The way that I like to prescribe it is to, to give it to people at night because one of the major side effects of gabapentin is it can make you sleepy. Uh, and I, I find a lot of people will, will feel tired and sometimes feel a little bit loopy on the gabapentin. And so taking it at nighttime um, can sometimes be a, a really nice way to help people to fall asleep if they're having trouble sleeping because of the pain 
one thing you have to be careful of, especially in older people, is that then if they get up in the middle of the night and they go to the bathroom or otherwise get out of bed, you worry about fall risks. So you have to you have to think about that as well. Um, but that's that. Th those are the kinds of spaces that gabapentin can can fill. The other side effects, uh, it can it can affect the mood. You know, it is used sometimes to to help treat depression, not as a first or even second line treatment usually, but but it's it's one of the armamentarium of things that people might be be taking. Um, so it, it it affects mood for better or, or or sometimes worse. So you have to be aware of that. Um, and sometimes it affects the memory, especially in older people, but in anyone. It can, it can kind of, it, I've had people tell me that they have trouble remembering their words when they're taking gabapentin. Um, th those are the main side effects. There are others. Um, and obviously, the higher the dosage that you, that you get on with the gabapentin, uh, the more likely you are to have, to have side effects from it. Uh, but I do think that if you're looking for, that if you're, if you're having pain, and it's, especially if it's, if it's limiting you from doing your exercises, or if it's just, really seriously impacting your quality of life while you're hopefully also going about getting the underlying problem better if you're going to be taking a pain medication and it's and if that medicine is not going to be tylenol which is probably one of the safest things that people can take as long as they take the recommended dosage um then gabapentin can be can can be a a good choice when when uh uh, when you also look at the other medications that, that you're taking and make sure there's no contraindications, etc. Something to always be talking about with your doctor, obviously, uh, to make sure that it's safe and appropriate for you. But um, with that said, and when you're thinking about also, the, the last thing is if you're taking it during the day, it can also make you dizzy, so you also want to be thinking about things like, like balance. Um, but within those kinds of confines, I think gabapentin can be, can be a worthwhile medication to consider for, for nerve pain. Um, there's also... Uh, gabapentin is the the trade name is Neurontin. The generic is gabapentin. There's a newer medication, Lyrica or pregabalin, uh, which you can also take. Basically, for essentially the same indications when it comes to nerve pain, um, a lot of people report fewer side effects on Lyrica, but I've had other people who report more side effects on Lyrica. So. Like with any medication, uh, you have to see how it's going to respond with you. And like with any medication, you want to start on a lower dosage before you try going to a, a, a higher dosage and work in close consultation with your doctor. But Lyrica would be another another uh, another option um, to take for a, a nerve pain medication. Lyrica with older people, I will say from my own experience prescribing, um, I've noticed a lot more uh, issues with cognition with, with Lyrica, and it's, and it's made me more reticent. Uh, to use it with some of my older patients, that's just my personal prescribing uh, experience, um, and it's just something something else to consider. Uh, and a lot of times, you won't know how you're going to how you're going to react to these medicines, both as in terms of how it's going to perhaps help you, and also in terms of the possible side effects. Um, but Lyrica is another is, is another nerve pain medication that one could consider in the same vein as a gabapentin. Uh, thank you for your question. I really appreciate it. It was a, a really good point. Uh, I, I think we'll, we'll we'll talk about more about other medications in uh, future videos. I think it's a really good point and something that gets gets overlooked sometimes um, as we really as we focus on trying to only fix, fix, fix. But sometimes you also have to say, look, quality of life while you're going about getting things better is is super um, important to uh, uh, to consider and to address. Obviously. Uh, that that's that's ultimately what all of this is really about and uh, we don't want to ignore how people are feeling while they're going through the process and so we want to use all the things that we can safely use um, when they're appropriate okay thank you very much again uh, thanks for the question uh, if you enjoyed this video answer please um, click like and subscribe and if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer in future videos please uh, send them in you can send me questions or comments to my email at drcooper at princetonsjc.com or feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or a question in the comment section. Um, thank you very much.